today we're going to do vegetable spaghetti. So I've got a pot of hot water and the spaghetti is already in there. Now I'm using a whole grain spaghetti. You might use a blended spaghetti, something that's going to add a lot more fiber. And while that's underway, I'm going to use this big skillet. I'm going to put around two tablespoons of vegetable oil or I'm using canola, but you could use uh, olive oil uh, or other type of oil that's for cooking. And when we get a little bit of a shimmer in there, or if you spill water in it, it starts to splatter. Uh, then I'm going to add a cup of sliced carrots that are cut about a quarter of an inch thick and let them cook just a minute. And then we're going to add to that a cup of onion that's been diced. Now we want to cut the, the carrots fairly thin, so a quarter of an inch is about all the thicker you want to do them because there's something that's going to take longer to cook than everything else that we're adding to it. Also to this, I'm going to add two cloves of garlic, and you can either press it or mince it, whichever you find most convenient. And we want to keep these stirring. It's good. They're going to cook for somewhere around oh, eight to ten minutes. We want them to soften up and cook, and this works out really well. The pasta usually cooks about ten minutes too. So if you start the vegetables cooking about the same time you start the, the you put the spaghetti in the pot, you're going to be good to go at the same time. Also to this, I'm going to add three cups of zucchini. Now this cooks much faster, so your alternatives here are either to put it in much later or to cut it much thicker. And so I've decided the carrots are cut about a quarter of an inch thick and the zucchini is cut about a half an inch thick so that with good luck and, and perseverance here, hopefully they'll come out to be done about the same time. So these are going to continue to cook again. We're going to add some salt to this later. You do have the option of adding salt to the vegetables now. It does pull the liquid out, which uh, adds to some of the, the juices in the pan, which means that because we're trying to brown these with oil, it's going to take longer for that browning to take place. There is some culinary controversy as to whether or not that's to your advantage or not, because while the salt um, being there makes it take a little bit longer to cook, it's better seasoned. It, uh, it's more absorbed and so it's more seasoned throughout. So again, you don't have to stir this constantly. Come back to it every few minutes, give it another stir, and uh, everything should come together. We'll come back when the pasta is done and when uh, we're ready to add some more things to uh, our vegetables. Okay, now this, this is a recipe that works really well uh, either in season with vegetables or off season. I'm going to use canned tomatoes. I've got one and a half to two cups. If you've canned your own, you might have closer to two cups of diced tomatoes. If you're using commercially canned, they're short changing us a little bit now, so it'll be more like one and a half to one and three quarters. Uh, you can use either the, the with salt added or without. If you're watching sodium, that's a good way to cut down on the amount of sodium that you've got is to limit the amount that goes in the vegetable. Uh, then you have control over uh, what you put in. I'm going to add to it a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm using coarse salt, so uh, that's going to be a little bit less than regular salt. I'm also going to add a half a teaspoon of black pepper and a teaspoon of dried basil. Now, if you have basil in season, this would be a good time to use that. Uh, and then I'm going to add a cup of edamame. Now this was frozen originally. It was uh, already shelled, so it's really easy to use. You thaw it before you add it, and then it's simply a matter of getting all these vegetables hot, and then this, this is going to be ready to go. Now if you don't have edamame, uh, green peas will work just fine. Again, thaw them a little bit if you're using frozen. And if you want to continue with something that's got a little bit more protein in it than green peas, you could also use baby lima beans, but you'd probably want to cook those a little bit more ahead of time. All right, our pasta is done, so I'm just going to let this go ahead and, and finish getting hot. And we'll start plating here a little bit. Now, when you're using multigrain or whole grain pasta, one of the things you want to do is read the label, because some of them, um, 
are not as uh, whole grain as you might think. And some of them actually aren't whole grain so much as uh, blended with other things to increase the fiber. So it depends a little bit on whether your goal is to get a lot of fiber or whether your goal is to make sure that you get those whole grain servings. Because the blended ones may have things like uh, different kinds of beans or lentils in there to bump the fiber up. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, if that's what your goal is. If you're looking at that, that whole grain, or if you're just looking at the fiber, it's going to make a little bit of difference, not a lot. Doesn't take very long for these to heat up, so they should be ready to go. And it's very colorful, very flavorful as well. And it, since we're only cooking the vegetables to the tender crisp stage, really, uh, it gives a lot of texture too. So. Uh, make sure that you get plenty of vegetables on each of the plates. And then if you choose, which I choose, we're going to top it with some shredded Parmesan or shredded blended uh, Italian cheese. And that's all there is to it. You can do a lot of that preparation ahead of time in the morning so that when you come home in the evening, the vegetables are chopped or, or diced and everything is ready to go. And you have a meal in very little time, basically the time it takes to cook the pasta. I hope you'll try this one. It's vegetable spaghetti for Oklahoma Gardening. I'm Barbara Brown.